secular TV had a hangout with uh, uh, D fucking Wayne, Pimp Monk X, and Foxhole Atheist. And they were playing a number of videos and were sort of responding to it. Uh, and uh, there are some areas that I wish they would have went a little more into. Um, to me, you know, even though, even if someone is dealing with a feminist to completely deny all points the person was trying to make, you know, I'm just like, eh, eh. And I was there in the comment section saying, hey, you know, well, she's kind of right about this little thing right here. And so I just decided, you know, I want to make a video uh, response to hers, uh, even though uh, I had told Bauman Bauman 211 on uh, Twitter that uh, I was kind of tired of making videos about this subject, but, uh, you know, oh well. <laughs> Anyway, here are bits of this video that I wanted to address. And in this video, I want to talk about the ways that patriarchy damages men's emotional literacy. So, let's talk about the male gaze first. Did you really have to go into the bullshit first? You know, there's also such a thing as the female gaze. You know? Uh... <laughs> but... Oh, it's wrong, it's so wrong. No, not really. <laughs> Women internalize the male gaze insofar as we're conditioned to look at our bodies as objects to be gazed upon and to be decorated. And so are men. How often do you hear about a woman who wants her man to, to dress a certain way and act a certain way when he's in public with her so he doesn't embarrass her? You know, she wants him to dress up a bit, you know, wear that uh, button-up shirt and, you know, tuck in those pants. In, uh, tuck in your shirt into your pants. Yeah, tuck in those pants. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, here, let me tuck in my pants. Let me, let me tuck, tuck in, let, let me tuck in your pants before you go to, when you go to bed. Good night. Don't forget to tuck in your pants. <laughs> so when we look at ourselves, a lot of us have internalized this idea of what femininity is, and we self-police accordingly. When we look at ourselves, it's like a voice in the back of our head that that is judging us, and this is the male gaze. And I get this feeling like if a woman looks at me and I'm not dressed uh, spiffy enough or something like that, they'll give this look like they're judging me for being uh, too masculine or too just something. There's, there's this judgment thing that I get out of that. So, I mean, and other guys get that same sort of thing. Uh-oh, this woman is staring at me in this way that doesn't look like it's very approving. Um, but I guess we should just sort of toss that aside because what women feel is is the only thing that's important, apparently, or something. This is something that is society-wide that we're all taught. And men, I think, also internalize this gaze, although slightly differently. Men internalize it in that they are required to look and act in a manner that they believe other men would approve. There's that, but there's also the feeling of what a woman would approve. You know, it's, it's there from both sexes. You know, I mean... And I'm, and women have the same thing with with how other women look at them. You know, women tend to be the ones that will judge other women as oh well she's just such a slut or something like that. Women tend to do that more than guys do. Quite frankly, that's what I've always seen. Um, and this really ultimately negatively affects the development of certain human capacities like emotion in men. Well, I'll give you that guys are taught that we're supposed to hide our other emotions. And so it ends up coming out in, you know, we'll feel the emotions, but the only thing that we end up feeling, seeming like we're supposed to be able to show to others is, you know, we're really hurt by something, right? And instead of showing that we're in pain or, or 
you know, emotionally in pain, we're, we're supposed to be, well, we've got to show it somehow, so let's show it as anger or irritation or something like that. And that definitely exists. It does. I'll give you that. And so, yeah, so in patriarchal society, men hold a more powerful position relative to women and non-binary people in the hierarchy of gender. So although men might be evaluated by women seeking sexual partners, the standards against which their masculinity is measured are really held in place by other men. And with women, unfortunately, it ends up being this thing of, uh, well, do you look like you make a lot of money? Oh, you're a worthless person. You're a useless person because you don't look like you make a lot of money. So again, it comes from both sexes. What you say about guys uh, and how they judge other guys in the straight world, yes, that does exist. But there's a lot of negativity from the other side as well. Um, men are prisoners of masculinity insofar as they internalize these cultural definitions of manhood. So some of these definitions would be that masculinity requires men to build this invisible wall of toughness around them. Yo, man, what are you looking at? What's your problem, man? They are not allowed to show vulnerability. This is something that men are often taught as very young children to man up and don't cry, be a man. Now, as it was said in the Hangout that I was doing text comments in, um, there are points where you don't want to just sit there and, well, I've just become helpless suddenly and I'm going to start crying so I can't finish doing what I need to do. You know? There are points when it just it's just not a good time to just suddenly lose all your rationality and logic and not be able to function. You know, sometimes you do need to man up and get through what you need to do and then as soon as you have the opportunity to to let out your emotions then that's when you let out your emotions there are other times where you know you could take a very short break and cry for just a moment and then continue on what you're doing okay that works too in some of those situations but for something that's time sensitive no you 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 do have to kind of man up Now, the problem comes into place when people will completely bottle it up, and they'll never let it out. And that can build up after a while and can become something very negative. These are things that we are constantly told growing up, and so they, become, they sort of become incorporated into ourselves. And that's what I mean when I say that we internalize the male gaze. We internalize them so deeply that we cannot tell whether we're evaluating ourselves or we're being evaluated by this gaze. Well, until the person actually talks to you, you are actually just evaluating yourself based on what your assumptions are about what their gaze is. So, you're evaluating yourself. And maybe on some false pretenses. Maybe you should stop that. But then again, that's easier said than done. Just like when a woman suddenly looks at me with this massive disapproval look, um, you know, I should probably not really care that much. But sometimes it's difficult. And men also have, might have inner conflicts about masculinity and the norms of appearance but they're very often compelled to hide these, this kind of confusion by acting more confident than they even really feel, because confidence and assertiveness is itself tied to masculinity. There is nothing wrong with being confident and assertive, period. There is nothing wrong with those things. Nothing would get done in this world if we didn't have people that were confident and assertive. 
Those are actually good traits. Now, overconfidence and the whole macho thing, I'm some sort of badass, you know, those aren't very good traits. But confidence and assertiveness, more people need to strive for that. Women should be striving for that. We should not be satisfied with just being submissive or docile or any of that, or shy. It would seem in our best interest to try to get out of those modes, to become more confident, to become more assertive. Those are positive traits. Those shouldn't be considered male traits. You should feel confident enough to be more assertive. That's how we get things done. And another thing is manliness is often associated with the external aspects of performance, like physical size. And unfortunately, on the other side of the coin, a lot of women focus on physical size in the sense of, oh, I have to be smaller, I have to be thinner and smaller and, and more, more innocent looking. You know, so kind of the opposite comes into place there. Uh, willingness and ability to fight and dominance over other people. So this helps explain why men commit far more acts of violence than women. It depends on what you're talking about. If you're talking about scenarios that don't have to do with a relationship, I might agree with you a bit more there. But if we're talking about relationships, I'd say it's pretty equal between who might become violent. Um, you, you see it a lot. And usually the guy is supposed to just be a man and not act really hurt over it. So, you know, when, when guys report that they're being beat uh, by their girlfriend or wife, uh, it's often looked at as a joke and they're looked down upon. Now that does bring up the thing that you were talking about earlier with how guys judge other, uh, guys judge other guys, so. Because these concepts are built into the idea of manhood, so in order to prove one's manhood, often it requires one to act out violently. Well, there's something that else that goes into that, and that is our desire to be competitive. And I don't really see there being anything wrong with being competitive as long as it doesn't hurt people, you know? And as long as we can guide that element of competitiveness into something beneficial, then all is well. Um, and as we'll see, men also act out violently because these are the only socially sanctioned ways that they can express their emotion in a lot of, in a lot of cases. There is definitely some truth to that. Uh, like I said earlier, you know, uh, one could be hurt by something, someone could be, there's a whole number of emotions that could come up. And the only way that society says that a guy is supposed to express those emotions is through uh, discontent, anger, and in some cases even violence, um, or threats of violence, or things that come close to violence. And so that definitely does come into place. So I'll give you that. So because, also because men and masculinity exists in relation and in reaction to femininity, men have to constantly be distancing themselves from feminine traits in order to gain respect from other men. And the same thing goes on on the opposite side, where women feel that they need to be docile and controllable and submissive and and all of these things, that they can't be confident, that they can't be assertive. So, you know, 
same sort of thing goes on the opposite side. So that could mean that men don't want to show any kind of emotion because emotion is tied to uh, being a woman and being feminine. Um, and I'm not saying that it's easier to to be a woman because obviously there's a lot of negative connotations attached to being emotional. Oh, women are over emotional. Women are too emotional. They're not rational. All of these, uh, all of this stigma attached to it. Well, to be fair, um, if if someone is the type of person where they will, they're in the middle of doing something important, something happens and they just start crying and they can't finish what they're doing, that's not a good thing. If someone is trying to have a rational, logical discussion or a debate or something like that and the person just starts going nuts, that's not necessarily a good thing either. So, you know, each femininity has some some negative stereotypes, masculinity has some negative stereotypes, and as long as we don't allow ourselves to fall within those negative stereotypes, at least as much as we can, you know, things should be good. But there's also a negative side to not being able to express the emotion and still have the status of manhood. That ends up being a big struggle for a lot of gay men. Because already there's this stigma that, well, if you're a gay man, you're not a real man. And so then a lot of people will just flat out give up on any sense of masculinity because they don't feel that they can ever meet those standards. And then when some people try, the way they get treated by some straight guys that are really macho, you know, it's, it's, it, they end up feeling very degraded. So. Um, so here we come to the damage on men's emotional systems. So this kind of hegemonic masculinity that I've very briefly outlined is the kind that supports the view that violent behavior in men is a normal means of dealing with emotional pain. So, you know, when you see that macho man in the movies punching the wall or getting in a fight because he's upset, because he's hurt by someone, because he got broken up with, th these are ways that we're taught to understand how a man expresses his emotional pain and vulnerability. And there really are very few socially acceptable outlets for men to express these feelings otherwise. So men find violent outlets, whether against other people or against themselves. And repressing emotional vulnerability is not only dangerous in that it causes men to lash out with physical violence, but it also leaves men incredibly alienated and isolated from their feelings. So isolated in, in the sense that... Well, not just from our feelings, but also from other people. It can make guys just withdraw. They're not able to connect with other people on a deeper level very easily because they are not allowed to express these emotions and also alienated because expressing these emotions means learning what these emotions are and women are granted more space to do that in our society even though it also comes with the attached dismissal of what they're saying but also women are allowed to express these emotions in a way that still grants them the status of woman whereas when men express these emotions they can lose the status of men it feels kind of weird to agree with you on so many things on this video it, it does it, it feel it's kind of weird because there's so many other areas that in in on other videos of yours that i just really disagree but this video you you've you've hit a lot of very true things and given the fact that manhood grants a great degree of social status especially for men of color and marginalized men this idea of being the masculine man will grant them a lot of social power that they might otherwise not have access to. And that's why a lot of feminine gay men end up being looked at as a joke, which is unfortunate. And I've had, I've had my own sense of prejudices in my past about that. And, uh, 
what definitely helped me quite a bit was when I did went through my purple phase. <laughs> Anyone looking back at videos of me earlier in the year can see what that is, and that really helped me a lot. I'm really glad that I that I went through that, even though I ended up having to, sh you know, cut this all back and stuff. But hey, it'll grow out again. Ultimately, it's important that we understand why men continue to attempt to live up to these expectations, just like us women, even feminist women like myself, why I continue to try to live up to these norms of femininity, even though I know that they are not real constructs, they're something that have been, I've been conditioned to. Yes, yes, and that's why you would make the statement that being confident and assertive are negative traits. You need to get out of that mode. Those are not negative traits. To take on, and I think that a lot of men understand that masculinity is this construct and it, it is something that is potentially harmful. Potentially, if someone does the whole macho thing. Masculinity does not equal macho. Okay, those things are different. Okay, masculine traits are not actually negative. Same thing with feminine traits are not actually negative. It's when some of those things are taken to extremes, when you start getting into the negative stereotypes of femininity or masculinity. That's when they become negative. So, they're potentially harmful if someone goes to the full-fledged negative stereotypes of those things. Or, at the very least, it's not something based in total reality, and yet it does really affect them, and it really affects the way they move through society, and the same goes for femininity. And it's also something that we've all internalized so deeply that it's really hard to distance ourselves from it. So it's important to understand where men are coming from, but also to understand why masculinity is so harmful. Please stop that. Please stop just labeling masculinity as harmful. Please stop that. Okay. Some people are naturally masculine. Some people are naturally feminine. Please do not label masculinity itself as harmful. If you've got some really strict definition of it in your head and it's it's all the bad stereotypes fine say say negative stereotypical masculinity fine but you're just saying masculinity and I I'm I have to disagree with you on this not only to other people but to men themselves it's harmful and if we can understand that and we can start talking about that then it's more likely that men can start to challenge these norms. And women need to challenge their norms as well. It is equally important. Now, with these bad stereotypes when it comes to guys, it does have the potential to be more harmful um, than the bad stereotypes that women are taught to be. But if we only attack, or tackle, I should say, the negative stereotypes associated with what guys are taught to be, and we don't do the same thing with women, guys will just end up becoming the same way again. Both sides perpetuate each other. The way women are taught to be perpetuate the way that guys are taught to be, and vice versa. It, it's both things must be addressed. They must be addressed. And that is one area that I very, very much struggle with a lot of feminists because they do not focus nearly enough on the negative stereotypes that women are taught to be. Um, and they'll tackle it, but then they'll blame everything on men. You know? Women need to be able to be mentally strong. 
Women need to be able to be assertive. Women need to be able to be confident. Some of those very things that you're associating as negative things about guys. Women need some of those traits. And guys need some of the traits that are normally associated with women. Okay, it would be a better world if we if everyone was to, to do that a little bit. Now, no matter what, there are going to be these natural differences. Um you know, for a longest for the longest time I would try to shove forth this idea that men and women, you know, it's that it's almost purely a societal thing on some of the differences, but I, I've kind of changed a little bit on that. I, you know, I used to say it's like 99%, and now I'd say about 85% of those things are social. But there is this small percentage of things where, you know, guys are naturally going to be a little more masculine, women are going to naturally be a little more feminine. But if we adopt some of the things socially from each side, then the natural way that we are will be more positive for everybody. And start to understand how important it is to be emotionally literate and to have that, to grant men that space to express their emotions in a more healthy way. Um, I hope this was helpful and I'll see y'all in my next video. It was indeed helpful. There are some areas that I hope that you're able to reevaluate. I don't even know if you'll ever see this video, but um, it was helpful. And maybe at a different time, I may not have been able to look at this video in as positive a way as I do now. But I'm glad I do now, so.